In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about ammonia transport to the liver. Our all body tissues generate ammonia. This ammonia is a toxic substance. Now why it is toxic that we will discuss in the latter video. Now as this ammonia is toxic, it needs to first get transported to the liver so that this toxic ammonia it gets converted to the urea right this urea is a less toxic but easily excretable product so urea then later on can get excreted in the urine in this video we'll see how this ammonia is transported to the liver in our body there are two mechanism by which ammonia can be transported to the liver the first mechanism utilizes glutamine where a second mechanism utilizes alanine. This both mechanisms, they are important for all the tissues. However, this glutamine utilizing mechanism is more important for the brain, whereas this mechanism which, is, which utilizes alanine, it is more important for the muscle. Let's discuss both of this mechanism one by one. Now to understand this both mechanism, first suppose this square represents liver. Of course, liver cannot be square, but this is just an illustration. So, suppose this square represents liver and anything outside of this square, it represents peripheral tissue. So, let us first talk about the mechanism of transport of ammonia which utilizes glutamine. As we had seen in the previous video that all the amino acids, they transport their amino group or you can say later on it is going to be converted to ammonia, they transport their ammonia to the glutamate. So glutamate is the collector of amino group of all the amino acids that we had discussed in the previous video. Now what happens in this peripheral tissue by the different metabolic processes for example, purine and pyrimidine catabolism, they generate ammonia. This ammonia, it binds with the glutamate. So, ammonia condenses with the glutamate and gets converted to the glutamine. This process, it requires enzyme. The name of enzyme is glutamine synthetase. So, here glutamine synthetase. Now, this process, it also requires energy and energy is given by this breaking down of the high energy bond of ATP. So, one high energy bond is utilized and so ATP gets converted to ADP plus inorganic phosphate. Now, what happens to this glutamine? This glutamine through the blood, it is taken to the liver. So, via blood, it reaches inside the liver. So, now glutamine is inside the liver. Once it is inside the liver, glutamine is acted upon by one more enzyme so that ammonia is released from here and glutamine gets converted again back to the glutamate. Here the enzyme is glutaminase. Once glutamate is formed, glutamate undergoes oxidative deamination and gets converted to alpha ketoglutarate and meanwhile ammonia is released and this reaction as we had seen in the previous video it is catalyzed by the glutamate dehydrogenase we had already discussed about this glutamate dehydrogenase in the previous video so i am not going into that detail now once this both of this ammonia is free so as you can see that ammonia from this and ammonia from the peripheral tissue both are transported by the glutamine and this ammonia is now appearing inside this liver. Now once ammonia is inside the liver, it is converted to the urea, right? This conversion of ammonia to urea that is the process of urea cycle that we will see in the next video, right? So this is the first mechanism by which ammonia can be transported inside the liver. Now let us look at the second mechanism which utilizes alanine. Now this alanine as I told you earlier, this mechanism is more of the significance in the muscle. 
Now in the muscle, what is happening? Muscles requires more energy. So what happened? The glucose is continuously utilized inside the muscle. So glucose continuously undergoes glycolysis to generate ATP and this ATP will be utilized for the contraction of the muscle. And so more and more pyruvate is generated. This pyruvate is coming from where? From the glucose. There is also a second source of pyruvate inside the muscle. Because branch chain amino acid, they are specifically catabolized inside the skeletal muscle. Branch chain amino acid, they first gets converted to the succinyl coenzyme A. And succinyl coenzyme A, it can also generate pyruvate. So, we can say that there is a appreciable high concentration of pyruvate inside the muscle. Now, what happens? As I told you earlier, and we had also discussed in the previous video that all the amino acids, their amino group is concentrated inside the glutamate. So, here also the same thing is happening that amino acids, they give their ammonia to the glutamate by the process of transamination. Now, once glutamate is there and we know that there is a high load of pyruvate inside the skeletal muscle. So, glutamate and pyruvate both undergo transamination with each other. So, glutamate gives their amino group to the pyruvate and pyruvate, pyruvate it gets converted to alanine and glutamate after losing its amino group it is converted to alpha keto glutarate. Now, once alanine is formed alanine enters in the blood and via blood it reaches inside the liver. So, now alanine is inside the liver and this is occurring, this is being transported through the blood. Once alanine is inside the liver, what will happen? Alanine again it undergoes transamination with the alpha ketoglutarate. So, this alpha ketoglutarate now receives amino group from the alanine and this alpha ketoglutarate after receiving amino group is converted to glutamate. And this alanine after losing its amino group, it is again converted back to the pyruvate. Now, as you can see, once glutamate is inside the liver, it follows the same fate as of this glutamate. So, glutamate by this glutamate dehydrogenase, it will lose its amino group as a ammonia and which will further make up a urea and the remaining product of alpha ketoglutarate, it recycles over here. So, here also as we can see, this ammonia is being transported through the alanine over here, right. So, this is the mechanism by which ammonia can be transported inside the liver. Now, there is something more to the story. What will happen to the pyruvate? See, this pyruvate, it, it is a very good glucogenic product and liver is the main organ which carries out gluconeogenesis. So, by the process of gluconeogenesis, pyruvate again converted back to the glucose and this glucose will be then later on transported by the blood towards the muscle. So, as you can see, there is an exchange of alanine against glucose. So, this particular cycle, this small cycle, it is called as a glucose alanine cycle. Glucose alanine cycle. This glucose alanine cycle is very, very important for the muscle. See, glucose alanine cycle it serves two purpose. The first purpose is that, that it transports ammonia from the muscle to the liver and second is that it is replenishing glucose towards the skeletal muscle. So, this liver, it replenishes the glucose so that this glucose can be utilized by the skeletal muscle. So, this is how ammonia is transported from the peripheral tissue to the liver. I hope that both of this mechanism by the glutamine and by the alanine, both mechanism and along with that glucose alanine cycle is clear to you. Thank you.